Hey everyone, it's Michael at RC Four Wheel Drive. I'm here today to go over our new officially licensed King Shocks. The part number for that is ZD0080. So today I'm gonna to go through um, all of the features of this new shock. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the engineering department figuring out how we can make a better shock and how we can improve on some of our uh, past shocks that we've made with King. And so I'm gonna go over all of the things that come with the shock plus how to build the shock to give you the best performance for it. So to start that, let's go ahead and open up this package. So in the package, you'll see there's um, a nice insert card with some engineering drawings. And then there's a quick explanation in here on how to uh, build the shock. And what we did in this shock is we included uh, an extra spacer. And while I'm building the shock, I'll, I'll go over exactly why we did that. So here you can take a good look at the shock, officially licensed King shocks. Uh, they have uh, their direct replacement for the tractor trucks. You'll see on the ends, we have basically copied the dimensions for the TRX4 rod ends on the top and the bottom so that you don't have to mess around with any spacers to get them to fit on there. These will also fit on just about um, any other truck. Most trucks usually uh, don't use a, a double shear mount. They just mount one side. So you can mount these to other brand trucks if you want to. Let me go ahead. I have one torn apart here already, already so I can show you all of the specifics that it, this comes with. So as I mentioned, um, the new rod ends that go on the top and the bottom have the wider and bigger uh, all so they fit directly in there. Now the other part that is new on this shock is we made the shaft it's about 3.8 millimeters in diameter so it's a much beefier shaft. Uh, it's a three millimeter rod end that goes on the end but the newest part of this is that we've uh, increased the engineering tolerances on this when it's made and it's also titanium nitride coated. Now what that's going to do is provide extreme uh, wearability and a very smooth finish. So you're not gonna have a shock shaft that's gonna get stuck or have a surface that's gonna wear down um, quickly once you get this thing. It should last much, much longer. So the other thing that we've done is these are gonna be really hard to see. So we'll probably get you a little picture, but we've there's two of these little X rings. Instead of an O ring, it's an X ring. So there's a double seal on each one. So it's almost like there's four O rings in there. And then the third part is, we'll get back to these spacers that we had in here. The point of the spacers is that there's two different widths. There's a thicker width and then a slightly smaller. And what that's gonna do is, you're not even gonna be able to see it on the video because it's only maybe 0.2 millimeters difference. That could, is just gonna compress the X-rings a little more and give you um, more sealing power so you're gonna lose uh, less oil over time because there's no such thing as a uh, oil proof leaking shock, but we've done the best we can to make this work out. So the next thing we need to do is I'm gonna go over how to, how to build the shock and building the shock, um, I know there's a lot of videos out there how to do it, uh, but we're just gonna run you through so you, know, you can see how it works specifically with these shocks. So the first thing we want to do is get some grease and we're going to grease up the X-rings on these before we put them back in the shock. And we're going to grease up everything that goes inside the cartridge. So I like to use just the end of my wrench to do that. We we'll just take a little grease and put a little down inside the body. And next we're just going to quickly assemble this. So take the X-rings and put a good coating on these guys all the way around, okay? And then we're gonna put those inside. Put our spacer in between the X-rings. Add some more oil to this guy. All right, so we have them in there. So the next step is to get our the cap that goes on the end. And all of these are machined Delrin. 
So they're extremely smooth, the shafts and the should slide in there very well. So I'm gonna start this threaded on, and before I get it tight, I'm gonna take our shaft and stick it down the other side. And the reason you wanna put the shaft in before you tighten it all the way down is because those X rings will compress and they'll put um, just a little force on the shaft and that'll make it tough to get it to go in there. So right now you can see how smoothly this goes in. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down as much as you can, finger tight. You can see it makes it just a little bit tighter. So there's two things you can do. Um, you can either just back this off a tiny bit and it'll loosen it up, or you can use the additional spacer that we provide in the packaging. It's a little bit smaller, so it'll compress the X-rings a little more, or a little less, I mean. All right, so the next step is going to be, we gotta put the rod end back on the shaft over here. Just cycle it a few times, feel how nice and smooth it is. So the next step is putting uh, oil in there. I like to use just our 35 weight oil. Uh, it's just a nice standard for when you're out in the trail driving around. Everyone has their own preference. A lot of people will put different weights in the front and the rear. It really just comes down to how you like to drive your, your truck drive. So remember when you're doing this, you wanna get the shock retainer back on here before you fill with oil because you don't have to take it apart. So this keeps the whole shock on the truck. Okay, so now that we have the upper cartridge and everything reassembled, we can add the oil. So you'll see that the upper shock retainer holds the spring in place and then there's the middle collar. So you have to make sure all of that is reassembled onto the shock. So next up, open up your oil. I like to start by just putting maybe about halfway in there. Cycle it a few times just to start getting those air bubbles out. And then we're gonna fill it to the top. This is the important part. You have to make sure you go up and down with it a few times to get the air bubbles out. ready to put the cap on. One thing to remember is, it might be hard to see, that oil is filled all the way to the brim and when I put the cap on, it's gonna force some of that oil out of there. Um, you wanna make sure that you have the shot completely compressed, otherwise you're gonna get into what we call hydro lock. There won't be enough room for the shaft to compress inside the shock because the volume of the oil and the shaft uh, is just larger than the entire volume of that shock, so it just won't go together. So we're gonna push this in here. You're gonna spill some oil. So I always like to make sure I have some paper towels around. Nice and smooth, okay. Shock is back together, so let's go ahead and reassemble the whole thing. Things do get slippery with all the oil. All right, so what I'm gonna do, it still feels just a little bit tight. So I'm gonna take this bottom cartridge and just loosen it just a little bit. There, and that makes that flow a lot, a lot better. We're gonna put the spring back on. Now, now it feels perfect, nice and smooth. All right, so the next step is put these on the truck. Um, Probably do some speed up here just so you guys don't have to watch every single step. Here 
here you can see the, the two shocks next to each other. So this is the stock Traxxas shock, and this is our King shock. I'm gonna put the top in first. So now that's on there, feels really nice and smooth compared to the sock one. Feels really good. Adds a really nice uh, scale appearance with the King shocks on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the wheels and the tire back on. All right, there you go. Everything's been installed. Perfect fit. Once you get the oil in there, it's probably about a five minute process to put them on all the truck, all the way around the truck. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and we'll get back to you. You can email us at support at rc4wheeldrive.com. Uh, please like and subscribe to the video so to get more and more updates on tech tips and new product reviews. Uh, you know, if you, have, if you haven't already, sign up for our newsletter. We always have new products coming out, so it's a good thing to get on board with that. Uh, and we hope to see you on the trails. Have a great time out there, guys. Thanks.